a wet cloth on Good Friday. So what is Good Friday? Many countries observe the Good Friday as a national holiday on the Friday before Easter. It honors the crucifixion of Jesus. And we'll get to all the good stuff later. Some say it comes from the word, from the use of the word good as an adjective applied to the day, which the old English cinnamon for holy. Also, it's worth noting that the confusion over the name is confer, confined to the most Western European and North American Christians. Eastern Orthodox Christians call it Great and Holy Friday. Around the rest of the world, it's known as Holy Friday in most Latin nations. Great Friday by the Sabbath people, Friday of morning in Germany, and Long Friday in Norway. It's served on the Friday before Easter Sunday, a date which may or may not coincide with the Jewish observance of Passover. So we have two different holidays here. Passover is not Esther. Esther is not Passover, and there's no relationship to the night that the lamb was to die. That's a very important information because Jesus died on the Passover as the Passover lamb. And we just read that the dates do not coincide with the Passover. So you have a day marked Friday of the crucifixion of Jesus Christ and you have a day of Passover that does not coincide. So you've got two different times that Jesus died. It's known by several names again, Great Friday, Holy Friday, Easter Friday. The date of Good Friday varies from one year to the next on both the Georgian and the Julian calendars. Good Friday has been recently become a national holiday in Cuba, at least since 2012. In March, Pope Benedict the XBI 14, I believe, paid a visit to the Caribbean nation and asked President Raul Castro to make a special day. April 6, a public holiday. Cashel reported gave the Pope his answer before the pontiff left the country. It's the first time Good Friday has ever been recognized by a government, that government, since religious, religious holidays were ended in 1960. Christmas was reinstated after Pope John Paul's second visit in 1998. In 1985, two Oxford University researchers published a paper naming April 3rd, 33 AD, as the original date of the crucifixion. They resulted in that date from a astronomical tables, the stars, such as the navigators of the old sailing ships, scriptural documentation, the Bible, and the years of Pontius Pilate's term in Judea from 26 to 36 AD. So they've taken the, the, the stars as a time where Genesis 1 says that they're given for times, for seasons. Uh, it's the moon, and, and the moon, the sun, and the stars. They're taking what the scripture account says. I hope they, they got it from the King James. And they're taking the reign of the ruler of the Roman government that was doing, actively crucifying, and then crucifying the Lord Jesus Christ. The researchers point out that all four Gospels agree the crucifixion occurred during the Jewish festival Passover. The scholars said it occurred during the Jewish festival Passover. Can I come back up here and read something again? The observance of Friday before Easter Sunday, a date which may or may not coincide with the Jewish observance of Passover. The Gospels agree the crucifixion during the Jewish festival Passover. Now we're going to go into a split. We're going to go the way of the Bible. We're going to go the way of church doctrine and traditions and what men say. We've had already documented evidence of men of scholarship and the church in the calendar. They say the church that Jesus died on Good Friday. The Bible says. The scriptures, the gospels say he died on Passover, and there are times when the Passover and the Good Friday do not meet. So Christ's 
did not die on Good Friday. And we'll look into more of that by the end. So what is done on Good Friday? Good Friday is a day of mourning. There are special Good Friday services. Christmas, excuse me, Christians meditate on Jesus' suffering and death on the cross. And what this means for their faith. That's the Lord's Supper. And Lord's Supper is given by Paul to the Corinthian church that we can do that daily. We can do it weekly. We can do it monthly. We can do it bi-monthly. We can do it yearly. And then we're to look forward to the coming of Jesus Christ. And it's the death, burial, resurrection of Jesus Christ. In some countries, there are special Good Friday processions or reenactments of the crucifixion. And then they call it the Passion. And they put on a show. They put on a play like they do at Christmas. In Bermuda, it's a tradition to fly kites on Good Friday. These are often handmade affairs with wooden sticks, tissue paper, glue, and string. The use of the wood and the shape of the kite is intended to re represent the cross. And a kite flying in the sky symbolizes the ascension to heaven. In Acts chapter 1. Though it's not a federal holiday, Connecticut, Delaware, Hawaii, Indiana, Kentucky, Louisiana, New Jersey, North Carolina, North Dakota, Tennessee observe a state holiday on Good Friday. Residents of these states listed might find that some municipal services and businesses, as well as banks, of course, will be closed. The stock market will be closed on Good Friday, meaning both NASDAQ and the New York Stock Exchange will not be trading. Congregations around the world reenact the crucifixion on Good Friday. In the Philippines, where Catholic fervor blends with indignatious beliefs, you know, the marriage of two religions, some devotees are actually nailed to crosses each year. Scripture and verse. The Catholic Church has condemned the ritual, but less gruesome reenactments are held in many other countries, including the U.S. Last year, groups observed Good Friday with crucifixion reenactments in Michigan, Louisiana, and Florida, amongst other states. I'm happy to say we shut one down in Norwich, Connecticut. We showed up with gospel tracts. We showed up with gospel signs. We were able to do it for two years. In the third year, I called, hey, when are you going to do that passion walk? Uh, we're not going to do that this year. Why not? And they gave them the answer. I guess they don't want the Christians showing up. They don't want the Bible showing up. Under Constitution law, the protection on, of Sundays and public holidays, Good Friday is treated as a steel tech take a quiet holiday in Germany. The restrictions do vary from state to state of Germany, but the intention is to restrict any activities which contradict the character of the day. Character of the day. This means that dancing is prohibited in many states, and all non-public entertainment events outside of the homes may be banned in some states. Another restriction is placed on what movies can be shown in cinemas. The FSK, the German Motion Picture Rating System, oversees a list of films that considers unsuitable for the holiday film. I think it's getting rid of it all. The general churches, or churches in general. Members of many denominations, including the Orthodox, the Oriental Orthodox, Eastern Orthodox, Catholic, Anglican, Lutheran, Methodist, and Reformed traditions observe Good Friday and with fasting and church services. The Catholic Church, tradition. This day is treated as a fast day, a day in which one only has one full meal and abstains from consumption of meat. As a result, many churches hold fish fries or fish Fridays where parishers can congregate and eat their meal. Well, uh, the meal where fried fish is served with another amongst different side items, but not limited to hush puppies, coleslaw, potato salad, and fries. I wonder if that's at a cost. Roman Catholic liturgical traditions offer no special rites between Holy Thursday and Easter Sunday. However, there are exceptions to the rule. Eastern and Western Christianity disagree over the calculation of the date of Easter and therefore of Good Friday. Well, we already read that it don't coincide with the Passover. 
uh, the feast of the days of the Bible found in the law of Moses have a specific day, have a specific month. The church, the religions have all over the place. Like Jeroboam had his own feast, had his own altar, had his calf, and made up his own feast day. Because the sacrifice of Jesus through his crucifixion is commemorated on this day, the divine liturgy, the sacrifice of bread and wine, is never celebrated on Good Friday, except when the day coincides with the great feast of the undemnication. So there's no mass. There's no cannibalism on Good Friday. I mean, if you're going to eat a little body and drink a little blood, that's cannibalism. Also on Great Friday, the clergy no longer wear the purple or red, and she sat upon a, a, a beast. Her, her color was purple and scarlet. That is the customary throughout the Great Lent, but instead down black vestments. Great and Holy Friday is served as a strict fast, also called the Black Fast. Adult Byzantine Christians are expected to abstain from all food and drink the entire day to ex extend that their health permits. So, I mean, if you're a diabetic, you, you got to have food, you have food. I'm glad I don't have a religion that tells me when to eat, what not to eat, how to eat, where to eat, when to eat, or how to eat, how to be, eat, eat, here, eat, there, eat, nowhere, eat, eat, eat. If I want to fast for the Lord, I am not under any obligation of my church, my pastor. I can say right now, okay, I'm just going to fast for the Lord for something. I don't need no church to tell me to do anything. I got the Bible. On this day, on this holy day, they say holy day, neither a meal is offered nor do we eat on the on this day of crucifixion. You'll find a big problem because Good Friday is not the crucifixion. But we'll deal with that later. Just reading the what they call facts. Just the facts, man. If someone is unable or has become very old, or is unable to fast, he may be given bread and water after sunset. Oh, thank you very much. In this way, we come to the holy commandment of the holy apostles not to eat on Great Friday. Chapter and verse in the book, please. In the King James 1611 Bible, and it better be of the 66 books that are authorized in the King James Bible. I have read this Bible, my Bible here, I have written down, let's see, I have read this Bible once, all the way through, since 2001, 2018, I don't know anywhere where Peter, Paul, James, John said, we are not to eat on Great Friday. The events of Good Friday are commemorated in the Stations of the Cross. A 14-step devotion often performed by Catholics during Lent, especially on Good Friday. The Stations of the Cross are commonly recited on Wednesdays and Fridays during Lent. Another devotional, the Acts of Reparation, may be prayed. Good Friday is a day of fasting within the church. I'm just mentioning, though the Holy Apostles did not say nothing about it, tradition. Oh, tradition, there is no Mass, no celebration of the Eucharist on Good Friday. The liturgy may be still performed and communed, if taken, comes from the host consecrated on Holy Thursday. Baptism, penance, anointing of the sick may be performed, but un only in unusual circumstances. So, to do your Mass of your cannibalism, you're going to have the body and blood of Jesus on Thursday carried over unto Friday and would be leftovers. That's what I'm saying. Now I'm not going to go into a great deal, but there were some sacrifices of the Lord given to the children of Israel in the law that uh, they could eat two or three days or the third day it had to be thrown out. And there were some things that they could not hold over to the next day. And I should have looked up, yeah, yeah. Oh, Exodus 12. This is not in my notes. Exodus 12. Exodus 12. Exodus 12. And ye shall let none of it remain until the morning that it remains of it, 
in the morning you shall burn it with fire. So when it comes to the Passover, when it comes to the eating of that lamb, the Passover lamb, there were to be no leftovers. So if you're to grab on Thursday the, the service and carry over into the next day, the Bible forbids it to the Jews, to those that are under the law. And the fact is that Christ did not die on Friday. He died on Wednesday, but we'll look at that later. Church bells are silent. Altars are left bare. In the seventh century, the church in Rome adopted a practice of adoration of the cross from the church in Jerusalem, where a fragment of wood believed to be the Lord's cross has been venerated every year on Good Friday since the fourth century. According to the tradition, a part of the Holy Cross was discovered by the mother of the Emperor Constantine, St. Helen, or may she blow over, on the pilgrims to Jerusalem in 326. This is the guy that saw the cross in the sky and go and conquer in the name of the Catholic Church. The mess that we are in. Matthew 15, 3. But he answered said unto them, why do you also transgress the commandments of God by your tradition? Mark 7, 9, he said unto them, Full well ye reject the commandment of God, that ye may keep your own tradition. Mark 7, 13, making the word of God none effect through your tradition. The Bible speaks against the tradition. A 5th century account describes the servants in Jerusalem. A coffer of gold plated silver contained the wood of the cross were brought forth. The bishop placed the relic on the table of the chapel of the crucifixion, and the faithful approached it, touching brow and eyes and lips to the wood, as the priest said, as every priest has said ever since, Behold the wood of the cross. In Galatians 3.13, God has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us, for, cur for his written, Cursed is anyone that hangeth on a tree. That holy cross is not a holy cross. It's a curse. In the New Testament, Galatians, written by Paul, thank you. Relics are not in the Bible. Adoration or veneration of the image of the representation of Christ's cross does not mean that we are actually adoring the material image, they say. Of course, but rather what it represents. Exodus 20, verse 4. Thou shalt not make any graven image or any likeness of anything that's in heaven above or its earth beneath or that's in the water under the earth. Leviticus 26, 1. You shall make no idols or graven images. Neither rear up any standard image at the cross. Take that, Baptist, too. Neither shall you set up any image of stone in your land to bow down unto it, for I am the Lord your God. For as much, Acts 17, 29, let's get the New Testament. For as much then as we are the offspring of God, we ought not to think that God has like unto gold, silver, stone, engraving in an art of man's device. Isaiah 42, a, I am the Lord, that is my name, and my glory will I not give to another, neither my praise to graven images. And kneeling before the crucifix and kissing it, we are paying the highest honor to the, our Lord's cross as an instrument of our salvation. Well, I'm glad it was an electric chair. Pay to kiss something that was plugged in. Second Samuel 20, verse 9, And Joab said to Mesa, Art thou in health, my brother? And Joab took Mesa by the beard with his right hand to kiss him. Psalms 2, 12, Kiss the son, lest he be angry. Hosea 13, 2, And now they sin more and more. And have made molten images of their silver and their idols according to their own understanding. All of the work of their craftsmen. They say unto them, let the men of this, let the men that sacrifice kiss the calves. Luke 22, 47. And while he spake, behold, a multitude, and he that was called Judas, one of the twelve, went before them and drew near unto Jesus to kiss him. Luke 22, 48. But Jesus said unto him, Judas, Betrayest thou the Son of God with a kiss? Relics, images, idols, kiss. All against the Bible. Uh-oh. Here we go. Another one. Hot cross buns. 
The familiar hot cross buns are sweet rolls with the sign of the cross cut into it. And they are one of the several traditional European breads marked with a cross for Good Friday. According to tradition, these buns originated at St. Albans Abbey in 1361, where the monks gave them to poor people who came there. Scripture and verse sounds like an imitation of the showbread of the law for the Jewish people. Each member of the family might choose a particular unpresent job which has been put off for a long time, like cleaning the garage or a closet, or scrubbing the bathroom floors, or whatever else you can think of, to emphasize the dearness of the appropriate up to the day. You pick a day that Christ suffered on the cross, and this is the day to clean out the garage. Woohoo! Woohoo! Can I say stupid? Can I be ignorant? Can I just say foolish? Each member of the family might choose a particular... Oh, wait a minute. That's, oh, that's twice. Twice as stupid. Protestant churches. That was Catholic we did. Protestant. Traditionally, you know what a Protestant church is? It's a Catholic church cleaned up. With some sacraments they don't do to Catholic church. Some things the Catholic church don't do, but other things they do do. Do do. I use the right word. Traditionally, this holiday is considered one of the most important ones of the Lutheran tradition. During this time, refraining from works of the world is expected, although this stance is lightly is slightened slightly in recent times. Because you know, places don't close. Alright, so now let's get to the scripture. Shall we? Shall we look at the Bible? And see what the Bible says. This late afternoon death consisted with the Passover lamb being killed between two evenings of the Jewish teaching. The lamb was killed between 3 and 6 p.m. on the afternoon of the 14th of Abed slash Nisan. Now the Jewish calendar had they the month had two names. The 14th Abed and prepared. Because the 15th was the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, which was the annual Sabbath observance. The first and last days of Unleavened Bread were annual Sabbath, in addition to normal, week, normal weekly Sabbath. Leviticus 23, 5-8. through In the 14th day of the first month at even, 6 p.m., is the Lord's Passover. And on the 15th day of the same month is the Feast of Unleavened Bread unto the Lord. Seven days you may eat unleavened bread. In the first day you shall have a holy convocation. You shall do no servile work therein. Even if it's the Sabbath weekly rest, or if it's not the Sabbath weekly rest, and it's not, it's a, another day. But ye shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord seven days, in the seventh day, a holy convocation, you shall do no servile work therein. The above text confirms that the first and last days of the Feast of Lent Bread are annual Sabbath every year, to be observed at the day of rest in addition to weekly Sabbath. These days would occur on the 15th and 21st of Abed or Nisan. The Passover meal was an important religious observance in which to remember that the blood of the lamb on the doorposts of their of their houses kept them alive when the angel of death passed by, that God had delivered them from the slavery of Egypt. What follows is a close examination of the biblical record in which Jesus was killed on the 14th of Nathan in the afternoon, and the next day was an annual Sabbath, the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Matthew 12, 38 to 40. You're not going to find this in a Catholic or Protestant church. Probably won't find it in a Baptist church. That will go looking for eggs. That cert then certain of the scribes and the Pharisees answered, saying, Master, we will see a sign from thee. But his answer said unto him, An evil and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign. And there shall no sign be given to it, but the sign of prophet Jonas. For as Jonas was three days and three nights in the well's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days 
and three nights in the heart of the earth. Okay, Friday, crucified. Sunday, Easter, he's resurrected. Friday, Saturday, eh. Johnny, tell our departing guests what they don't get for a prize. Friday to Easter is never, has not ever been, and will never be three days and three nights. Tradition above the word of God. Matthew 26, 60 to 61. But found none, yea, though many false witnesses came, yet found they none. At last came two false witnesses, saying, This fellow is able to destroy the temple of God and build it in three days. Matthew 27, 62 to 66. Now the next day, that followed the day of the preparation, the chief priests and said, uh, Pharisees came together to Pilate, saying, Sir, remember that this deceiver said while well, he was yet alive, After three days I will rise again. Command, therefore, that the scepter be made sure unto the third day. Lest his disciples come by night and steal him away. And say unto the people, He's risen from the dead. The last error shall be worse than the first. And Pilate said unto him, You have a watch. Go your way. Make it as sure as you can. That sounds like he really assured himself. So they went and made the sepulchre sure, sealing the stone, setting a watch. The above verses show that Jesus openly taught that the major sign that he was the Messiah was that he would die and three days later rise again. Even more clearly, he said that he would be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. This promise meant that 72 hours would pass from his death to his resurrection. That would be the sign to the Jews that he was what he said, the Messiah. Now the problem, how could Jesus have been in the heart of the earth for three days and three nights if he died on Friday afternoon and rose before sunrise on Sunday? One day and two nights. Friday night time, Saturday daytime. Saturday night time, in our measures of days. They don't add, they don't compute. That does not agree with what Jesus said. And if they add in the Friday daytime, though he died at, at night, Jewish time, 6 p.m., evening, evening. It's night. They get two periods of daytime, even though Jesus would have died in the late afternoon on Friday, if that's the day. The Friday crucifixion with the resurrection before sunrise on Sunday morning totals approximately 36 hours. Someone's wrong. And we understood that Jesus mean that within three days and three nights, he would rise again then any period short of that would not suffice. But he taught that after three days and three nights in the heart of the earth, that he would rise again. This logically would necessary in, to put the crucifixion on a Wednesday. Then the daylight and nighttime periods of Thursday, Friday, and Saturday would be the three days and three nights, the 72 hours. Now, we only need to determine whether the annual Sabbath or weekly Sabbath fell on the same day, which would lead us to the conclusion that Jesus died on a Friday afternoon, shortly after 3 p.m. is commonly taught. If not, then he died on another day of the week. Yet today, most churches ignore this sign. I chose that word. To explain that it didn't really mean three days and three nights. What did I just read to you? I read to you the scriptures, and if your Bible has the words of Christ in red, it, the words would be three days and three nights, as Jonah was three days and three nights. But Jesus Christ, God manifest flesh, did not know what he was talking about. I would not want to stand in your shoes when you're standing before Jesus and have to say that to him. You just called Jesus a liar and the, and the maker of time, Genesis 1, he doesn't know what he's talking about. 
You better take your tradition, throw that into hell, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved, and get right with God. All right, first, try to do the math. Almost all, I mean, this might be the same math that they teach in the schools today. Maybe they moved it over from the Catholics. Ooh, that's interesting. Made a Catholic go into our public system and trying to teach our kids the way of tradition and not the Bible. You do know the first public school systems in America were to teach people how to read the Bible. You do know that, right? We've come a long way backwards. Almost all Christian churches teach Jesus Christ died and was buried late Good Friday afternoon. Then was raised early Easter Sunday morning. That's Friday night, Saturday day, Saturday night. That's two nights and one day again. If you want to stretch things and call the few minutes of daylight on Friday a day, that only is two days and two nights. You come short. And if you don't come up full, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. When you come that short, you're going to go to hell. So let's look at the answer, shall we? You notice that the above text from Matthew 27 recorded that the chief priest met with Pilate the next morning after the crucifixion to get permission to post a guard at the, at the tomb to seal it. The Bible records that this was the day after the preparation. The day of the preparation is the 14th of Abed or Nassau, when the homes were scored or scoured for any leavened bread within the house and the preparation of food was re readied for the Passover meal and the feast of unleavened bread, Mark 15, 42. Luke 23, 54, John 19, 14, 31, and 42. And what time this is coming up to the Feast of Bread, God said, hey, I don't want any leaven in your house. And if there's any time that a Jewish person would clean their house would be the day before the, the, uh, the, the Passover. Because it would be the Passover and unleavened bread. They would go through their house. And I, I've been told by Jews, I mean, they vacuum the cupboard. They get that little broom thing and the dustpan. And they just go over through the... Uh oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, hold on. Didn't I read somewhere on Good Friday you're supposed to do a chore in your house, clean the garage, clean the bathroom floor, or something that you've been putting off? Has not the Catholics stolen from the Jewish people? But going back to where it is, the day before the, the Passover, they would clean the, there would be no leaven in their house, according to the law. And then the next day would be the Passover, and they would eat that meal. At, at, they would kill the lamb at, at even, 6 p.m. They would dine on that meal. They're not to break a bone of that meal. And there were to be no leftovers. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. You can't have the Mass on Good Friday, but you can carry it over from Thursday. Somebody has stolen from the law to put you under a law that we're not under law, we're under grace. Therefore, the grave of Jesus was not sealed until the morning of 15th of Abed, Nassim or Nisan on the annual Sabbath, which is not the seventh day Sabbath. It was a high day the Bible speaks about. So in the text of John 19, 31, we will learn that the body of Jesus needed to be removed from the cross because the Sabbath was about to begin. And the Sabbath was a high day or an annual Sabbath, and there were to be no work to be done on the Sabbath. So if you're a Seventh-day Adventist, Baptist, whatever, and you drive to your church, you're violating the law. And if you strike your stove, the Bible says you weren't even to strike a match, a fire. A guy was picking up sticks and they stoned him to death. But you don't know that. John 19, 31. Then the Jews, therefore, because it was in preparation, that the body should not remain on the cross on the Sabbath day. For the Sabbath day was a high day. Extraordinary Sabbath, better than any other Sabbath. We saw Pilate that their legs might be broken, that they might be taken away. John 19, 39 to 40. And there came also Nicodemus, which was the first came to Jesus by night, chapter 3, and brought a mixture of myrrh, aloes, about a hundred pounds weight. Then took they the body of Jesus and wound it in linen cloth with the spices as a manner of the Jews to bury. 
Matthew 27, 59 to 61. And when Joseph had laid the body, he wrapped it clean linen cloth and laid it in his own new tomb, which, had, which he had hewed out of the rock. And he rolled a great stone to the door of the scepter and departed. And there was Mary Magdalene, the other Mary, sitting over against the scepter, witnesses out of the mouth of two or three. Mark 15, 46 to 47. And he brought fine linen and took him down and wrapped him in linen and laid him in a sepulcher that was hewed out of a rock, and rolled a stone unto the door of the sepulcher, and Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of Joseph, beheld where he was laid. Notice how they did not make importance of Mary, Jesus' mother. That's Mary right there, mother of Joseph. Joseph, the Catholic Church wants to deny, is Jesus' brother. They didn't give her the Virgin Mary title there. Luke 23, 54 to 56. And that day was preparation, the Sabbath drew on. And the women also, which came from him from Galilee, followed after and beheld the scepter and how his body was laid, witnesses. And they returned and prepared spices and ointments and rested the Sabbath day. So here's a day they're doing work, and then the Sabbath day, they took a break, according to the commandment. So Joseph took Jesus' body after receiving permission from Pilate, brought a linen sheet, and bound the body with Nicodemus' assistance. Nicodemus had brought a hundred pounds of myrrh and aloe, which they bound with the body. The tomb was near where Jesus was crucified and belonged to Joseph who had carved the tomb out of a rock. It was a new tomb that had never been used before. Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of Joseph, that's Mary, accompanied the body with the cross and watched the entire process of the burial. And when Jesus' body laid in the tomb, then Joseph, assisted by Nicodemus, rolled a large stone in front of the tomb, opening, and left. Finally, the two Marys left, prepared spices and perfumes before resting on the Sabbath day. The women, in preparing spices and perfumes with which they intended to anoint the body of Jesus, Luke 23, 56. And they returned to prepare spices and ointments and rested the Sabbath day according to the commandment, chapter 24, verses 1 and 2. Now upon the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they came to the sepulcher bringing spices which they had prepared, and certain others with them, and they found the stone rolled away from the sepulcher. So that day they rested. That's the Sabbath. That's the seventh day. That's the day you don't do nothing. And then the next day, Sunday, the very early in the morning, they come out of their house, they're able to go out, and they're going to where Jesus was buried. I mean, if you want to have a Friday celebration, prepare the spices for a dead body Jesus day. Have a day where you make spices and everything like that. But it's not the day of the crucifixion. That was on Wednesday. Matthew 28, 1 through 4, in the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week, came Mary Magdalene, the other Mary, to see the sepulchre. And behold, there was a great earthquake. And the angel of the Lord descended from heaven, came and rolled back the stone from the door, and sat upon him. And his countenance was like lightning, and his raiment was white as snow. And for fear of him, the keepers did shake and became as dead men. Mark 20, Mark, uh, excuse me, John 20, verse 1 and 2. The first day of the week cometh Mary Magdalene early. This is all documented in the Bible. The Holy Spirit inspired, when it was yet dark unto the sepulchre, seeing that the stone take away from the sepulchre, then she runneth and cometh to Simon Peter. But there it is. The Mark 16 text says Mary Magdalene and the other Mary bought spices after the Sabbath and prepared them. While in Luke 23, the text states that the women prepared spices and then rested on the Sabbath. This consisted of the annual Sabbath on Thursday, the first day the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the weekly Sabbath on Saturday. So they prepared the, the, the Feast of Unleavened Bread with Thursday. They prepared the spices and everything for Jesus' dead body on Friday. They rested on the, on the Saturday. And then the Resurrection Sunday, which never coincides with Easter. We've already read that. They came to see a dead body, Jesus. They didn't come to see rabbits pooping out jelly beans. 
They didn't come to see eggs. We know that these are the same women because the Bible verses all relate Mary Magdalene was involved in these events. And I believe they're making a Hollywood movie now about her. And they're going to probably distort her. They're going to probably disclaim her so they can disclaim the Bible like they did with Noah. Now, I never watched that movie Noah, but I have been told story how far-fetched in the Bible that is. However, <laughs> we read that one. Yeah. However, two other Marys are mentioned. One, the mother of James is alone. That's Mary, the mother of Jesus. Oh, no, James is alone. And the other mother of Joseph. That's the brother of Jesus. But in all cases, Mary Magdalene was involved. Therefore, the women saw Jesus' body being laid in the tomb on Wednesday afternoon. They rested on the annual Sabbath on Thursday, the Feast of Unleavened Bread. They bought the spices on Friday. They prepared the spices on Friday and then rested according to the commandment of the weekly Sabbath on Saturday. After the weekly Sabbath, they intended to anoint Jesus' body with the perfumes and spices the next new day. Therefore, by the evidence, we have proven that the Passover was on Wednesday and that Jesus did as he said. He rose again three days and three nights according to the scriptures, 72 hours, not 36. Mark 16, 9, now when Jesus was risen early first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene, of whom he cast out seven devils. The fact is, the Last Supper celebrated with the bread and wine by Jesus, and the disciples took pass on the evening of the fourth day of the week. We would say Tuesday evening. It was not the Passover Cedar. Forgive me if I'm saying that wrong. Meal. So, the Last Supper was Tuesday. Tuesday into Wednesday is in the garden. Wednesday morning, he is standing before the priest, and the priest release him into Pilate. He is crucified that evening on Wednesday. On Thursday, there is the Feast Unleavened Bread. You can't do nothing. No one's doing nothing. You gotta hurry up. You gotta get that body in tomb. You gotta get rid of those bodies, because there's a fast coming. Jews can't do nothing. Friday, they go out and buy or pick or wherever they get the spices, and they're doing the spices like they would for a dead body. Saturday, they are resting. They can't do nothing. It's the weekly Sabbath. And when the Sabbath is over, they come out of their house, they walk, they're bringing, they're carrying, they're doing things. Jesus was crucified on Wednesday and was in the grave three days and three nights. He rose from the dead late on the Sabbath. And this will carry over the next day when the women came, but Finally, he revealed himself to Mary Magdalene and the disciples on the first day of the week, shortly after sunrise. And that, my friend, is where we take and throw a Good Friday out the window. Where it's not scriptural, it's according to tradition, it's according to a sinful church that will not acknowledge the scriptures. There's a big difference between 72 hours and 36 hours. And if you don't believe me, go to work and work 72 hours next week and let your boss pay you for 36. And when you say, well, why did I get you? That's Good Friday, my friend. We'll pay you for 36 hours, though you work three days and three nights. You would not enjoy that. And yet the Catholic Church will have you so fooled to think that we can fit 36 hours in 72. They need to go back to school. They need to get math again. They need to go back and do math. And they need to go back and learn Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. One, two, three, four. It's an error of the church. 